Maybe we'll just I thought maybe we'd just start and then they can all come in. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in our community in the last week. Call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of minutes, please. Third order, 3A. Applications along with decisions rendered by the Zoning Hearing Board on Wednesday, March 13, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B. Controller's report for the month ending February 28, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you, Mrs. Craig. Uh, do any council members have announcements? Please, uh, just one disclaimer. Uh, the, the bandage and the uh, black eye are not a result of my wife hitting me. Um, <laughs> I just want to make that clear. Uh, <laughs> Um, I had a, I had a skin cancer removed from the my temple area, and it was rather extensive. So there's an ugly scar under there. I just covered it up. And, and secondly, uh, I'd like to uh, wish or congratulate the Holy Cross boys basketball team, and wish them good luck. They advanced to the PIAA Class 2A um, final this Saturday. Uh, great group of kids, so good luck to Coach Calais and Holy Cross Crusaders. I'm, I'm just glad it wasn't from celebrating too hard on St. Patrick's Day. No, I'm glad to hear you're doing good. <laughs> yes. yes, I'm very glad to hear that Mr. McGough is doing well, and I'd also like to wish Councilman Rogan a very happy birthday as well. Mm -hmm. Is today your birthday? Yes, happy it is. Birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> um, the Fraternal Order of Eagles, number 314, located at 493 Meridian Avenue in Scranton, will conduct a Purple Day Epilepsy uh, Benefit this Saturday, March 23rd, 2013. The benefit includes a free health fair from 2 to 5 p.m., a DJ from 5 to 8 p.m., and live music from Earthen from 8 to 11 p.m. A $5 donation is suggested. Tickets are available in advance or at the door. All proceeds benefit the Anita Foundation for the Awareness of Epilepsy and World Purple Day. For additional information, call the club at 570 570-961-5495. PPL Corporation is warning customers to beware of telemarketers or door-to-door -door salesmen claiming to be PPL employees. The corporation said neither PPL Electric Utilities nor PPL Energy Plus engage in telemarketing 
or door-to-door -door sales for the purpose of encouraging residential customers to switch energy suppliers. Customers should beware of these false claims and avoid sharing personal information with these individuals. <coughs> All PPL electric utilities employees and contractors carry identification. You should ask to see identification before opening your door. If you have doubts about a caller or visitor claiming to represent PPL, call PPL Electric Utilities at 1-800-342-5775. Customers who suspect they've been the target of a scam should call their local police department. A Delivering for America rally will be held this Sunday, March 24th, 2013, from 1 o'clock p.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. at the Lackawanna County Courthouse on the Washington, the North Washington Avenue side. Speakers will include Congressman Matt Cartwright, local and state representatives, local labor leaders, and there will be music, signs, and chants. We need to keep delivering for America. Please bring your friends and families. And this rally is being sponsored by the postal workers. So please come out and support our local postal workers on Sunday, March 14th, 1 o'clock, Lackawanna, Lackawanna County Courthouse. And that's it. Mrs. Evans, I mm -hmm. think that was the 24th and not the 14th. You're right. Thank you. March <laughs> 24th. Yeah, <laughs> March 24th, this Sunday. Thank you. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman. Brother Bob looks like I did years ago when my wife introduced me to that dollar Teflon frying pan. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I know it was hurt. Yeah. Well, my topic tonight is the outrageous waste of our tax dollars or why council wasted $10,000 on Joe Burt. This is not an attack on council. This is my opinion. We have a difference of opinion here. I, I can't understand why there is a study of this road for $10,000. We don't have any money to pay salaries, for God's sake. This, what, what? This is an absolute waste. It just doesn't make sense. This is, I sat, I stood here five, six weeks ago at this very spot. I told you Joe Burke made a very bad house deal. He must have been dreaming that the Naples would buy him out of it. That is why all this is going on. He, he wants out of a house deal. Forty years, nobody's complained. There's three, four, six trucks a day. There's, there's days and weeks that there's no trucks whatsoever. Then there was this scenario of accusing them of having something in the loads of dirt. That, that was a implied implication. There's something going on. That's, that's not right. Again, I'm standing here as a homeowner and a taxpayer and nothing else. I'm not a spokesman. They have a qualified spokesman, these people. I don't know how to say it. I, I just, 
I've, I've been a friend of the family and an employee. That's not why I'm here. I'm here because of, of being a taxpayer and nothing else. I got trucks, I got hundreds of trucks a day go by my house, 60, 80 miles an hour, 24 7. Nobody's interested. I've stood here for years and complained I can't walk down the sidewalk, nobody's interested. This man comes one time and complains and there's all this to do. You know, you're talking about people, his name's on the library, it's every place you'd look in this city, the medical school, the, the soup kitchen, the colleges, they've helped scores and scores of young people get started in businesses. Now, you've alienated this man with, with all this going on over this Scranton Road. It, it needs to stop. You sure don't need Joe Burke for anything. This city needs the DeNaples. And like I said, the, the Boluses and the Weinbergs, we need people like that. We sure don't need no troublemakers like, like this man is. You know, to change the subject, I, I sat there and, and watched y'all treat Mr. Walsh like he was Jesus Christ or something last week. Right under his nose, with, with the meter maids telling him, meters aren't working, he didn't do nothing. He is a $200,000 a year waste of, of money babysitting a failed business. I, I, Mr. Elman, what do we need him for? Mr. Elman, uh, Mr. Washoe has nothing to do with the parking meters. He's managing garages only. The parking meters fall under the on-street parking program. So Mr. Washoe has absolutely no authority or any involvement with that side of the issue. Well, he, he, he hasn't done $200,000 worth of, of value to the city, and he never will. It, it now, now the people that want to get a contract from us, the first move they have, they're $300,000 short. You know, what do we need people like this for? We could lose all our own money, it seems, you know. We got what one point nine million we owed. Now they want three hundred thousand. There, there is no money. There's just no money to pay these people. It doesn't. It just doesn't add up. What's happening to the taxpayer in this city? You know, I, I, I know. I just harp on it all the time. I talked to a lady this week at the grocery store when I was waiting outside. She told me she's renting a duplex for $200 less than she did 10 years ago. That's what's happening to our city, you know. It, it, Thank you. It, it's just gotten, it, it's like the fire and the police. They have priced themselves out of the market. Thank That's you. what's happened with our tax base. Thank you. Thank our you. next speaker is Gerard Hetman. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Gerard Hetman from Lackawanna County's Community <laughs> Relations Department. Good to see you as always. Uh, to begin this evening, the County Arts and Culture Department is issuing two calls for artists for upcoming arts and culture events taking place in Scranton and Lackawanna County during the summer months. The first is the annual Art in the Park program, which sees each Tuesday afternoon during the month of July art programming taking place free for children and accompanying adults at the different county parks, uh, including actually at McDade Park in Scranton on the last Tuesday in July. Um, artists, both performing artists and visual artists, sculptors, painters, etc., are free to apply. Uh, they can do two out of the four sessions during the month. Um, any of them can apply. They do need to submit a resume um, and some type of portfolio based on their work, and they can contact the Arts and Culture Department by calling 570-963-6590, extension 106, or by emailing artsculture, all one word, at lackawannacounty.org. Uh, the second item is a new event 
taking place in conjunction with the second annual Peach Music Festival on Montage Mountain. Uh, this is the Paint a Peach Decorating Contest. Uh, it's a visual art contest that sees participants decorate a four by four wooden peach painting, sculpting, whatever they like. Um, entries can be picked up actually three different ways at each first Friday leading up to the month of August, April, May, June, July, um, at different locations according to the first Friday. Um, then the theme is that in conjunction with first Friday, peaches will be displayed and judged at the August first Friday and then be displayed at the Peach Festival later that month at the Toyota Pavilion at Montage Mountain. So artists can pick one up at any of the next upcoming four First Fridays. They can also stop at the Toyota Pavilion box office on Montage Mountain. They can also contact the program coordinator, Elisa Scazzafabo, at artsculture570 at gmail.com. Um, this is a new event, uh, building a little bit on success of the Peach Festival last year. Uh, we saw a lot of people in town um, visiting for the festival, and this is something to add a little bit more to the arts and culture community in the area uh, with that in mind. Um, and last, uh, lastly, the County Parks and Recreation Department is doing their annual women's golf clinic and also their junior golf clinic. Uh, the women's golf clinic takes place from Thursday, April 30th, and then going through the month of May on Thursdays. Uh, the children's golf clinic takes place during the months of June and July, and there's registration and a small fee required for both programs. Uh, registration and additional information can be obtained by calling the Parks and Recreation Department at 570-963-6764. And lastly, I didn't bring one up tonight, but we do have a new brochure available uh, for the building here that advertises a little bit about the coal mine tour and also the trolley museum. We'll leave some copies that you can leave outside or anywhere else. And we always thank you for publicizing some of those activities, programs, and events that we talk about and that we put out there. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> no one else has signed uh, the speaker's sheet. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Good evening, council. Dave Dobson, president Good evening. of Scranton. Good evening. Texas paid. Um, once again, I'd like to uh, mention tax exempts. And uh, I had a little idea that possibly they could co-op with the city and go to the state. Currently, I read that there is a, uh, a movement in the state assembly right now. It's on the back page of uh, the A section of the Times about something about property taxes with P Pittsburgh. So. I would suggest you try and read it. I'll try and keep it and maybe turn it over if you'd prefer not to purchase the Times. Uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes I don't. I've been thinking of laying off my, uh, my delivery person and uh, paying them unemployment compensation. <laughs> not to deliver them already. Uh, but we really have to address this issue and it's currently being addressed in the state uh, assembly and uh, hopefully it'll get some better attention than just we're going to put them there and you're going to pay which is what we get from our representatives currently right now and uh, I brought or another print of that article Jack you mentioned you didn't get it so Thank you. If you could uh, give Mr. McGough a copy, he wasn't here, and uh, I would suggest that you leave one in council's office for the public employees, because it has a lot to do with public spending and how with the uh, trade imbalances, it's not as effective anymore, and it affects us all. Uh, even car parts are made in China, so if we buy an American-made car, 90% of the labor is Chinese labor. You know, it, uh, it always amazes me how well all these wonderful capitalists get along with the uh, uh, Chinese government, which is, isn't even really a socialist government. They're basically fascist. Um, okay. Uh, 
I'd like to also mention that tires and televisions and so forth are building up in the courts. And there is a program to take some of them down to the recycling center. I don't know about tires, but uh, it's getting to be a little bit of a problem here. And I was also wondering on Hilton if they're still charging <laughs> to park and getting free spaces with the uh, parking authority and receivership. I'll have to put that in writing for next week. I'll do that. And uh, on a sequester, is that final now uh, where uh, last week? It's on tonight's agenda for final passage. Okay, okay, good. I, I might have, yeah, I, that's what I did. Okay, I was just glossing over it and I missed it. Um, and, uh, okay, spay and neuter. We also have a lot of abandoned animals around. Uh, people lose their apartments or whatever and they don't have the heart to turn them over to the shelter. Uh, and a lot of the problem is they are not neutered to begin with, so you wind up with five cats, keeping in mind that a cat is the Egyptian goddess of fertility. So uh, the number for low-cost spay and neuter is 570-994-5846. I'd like to mention that again because it's also costing the city money too, uh, as have been previously discussed. And uh, okay, uh, we're back to the golden parrot. And that goes to Chris Kelly of the Scranton Times in the editorial section. Please, please stop your, car, uh, your cartoon characters and Ed Cole too. Uh, we're tired of it. I'm very tired of it. Uh, and all I can offer them is a triple super duper bok 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 because your history is revisionist in your editorial section and I am really sick of it. I'm to a point, like I said, where I'm ready to pay my carrier unemployment compensation. His tip, his uh, cut of the action, and don't deliver the times to me anymore for a period of time. And, uh, well, thank you uh, and have a good night and I'll be listening into the rest of the meeting. Thank you. Thank Bell you. rang, I can't buy any more time, can I? No? Okay. <laughs> Andy Spragley, this is Scranton, fellow Scrantonians. Good evening. There's a good chance we won't have a meeting next week, being that's the Easter week. Uh, yes, we'll have a meeting. We have always had our meetings during Easter week. Well, sometimes they used to get closer to the Easter, but that's okay. It's, oh, yeah. You are on Thursday. No, you're on. Well, there we had originally when I was first seated on council for many, many years until probably 2007, maybe 2008 the meetings were always held on thursday evenings and we always conducted the meetings during easter week well okay then i'll be able to wish you happy easter then <coughs> i don't know scranton is the only city i know of where a man could take a nap and make one hundred and seventy-five thousand. i'm not going to get into it more it's it's all very ludicrous there to say it and we all know it and there isn't much we can laugh at the situation. It's just tragic. Let's get back to the parking authority because that's going to be really hurting us. That study that they made on the parking in Scranton, when was that study, if you remember, when was it actually uh, put out? Where I guess they did it. They made a request for a study. How old was that study? Do you know offhand? I heard you say it once in a while, but you never said how old it was. I don't know. Hmm? I don't know. Well, anyway, obviously it was a flawed study. I, what you should do is ask Billy, really to get a handle on this, ask Billy 
You know, everybody pays $52 that works in the city. According to somebody, there was, what, 26,000 people that work from out of town inside the city? Was this, would a figure like that? I know it was a huge figure. Yes. Ask Billy to sort of zero down how many of them people actually live within Central City. And then you can take the state workers because they have their own parking. And some of these other places have their own parking too. And when you finally get how many people actually need that parking, you get a picture of that parking. 30% you call is ridiculous. But the city of Scranton taxpayers have to pay for it. And what do we get for it? We get nothing for it. So if we're gonna, if, if Billy makes the study and we find out that that thing could never get more than 40% or something like that, occupants, maybe we can offer the city of Scranton some of the people that they're good deals to get that parking, uh, Actually, people in that parking garage, maybe up to 70 or 80 percent, we're stuck anyway. Or we're going to be stuck until I die. And probably my son, well, he don't live here, thank God, so it won't be him. But I know I will. I'll die long before that parking garage is ever straightened out. So let's get a good study. And Billy could do most of it because he knows where the money's coming from. He knows how many people in the state is paying us 52 bucks. How many people, well, Sampters probably use the state parking lot. And some of these other places, like I can see only three major things, the post office, the federal building, the courthouse, and actually city hall. That would be the, the main people that would use this parking. People coming into the city are happy with the meter because they're coming to the doctor's office if they can find a spot. But if we make the rates at that parking garage a little cheaper than the meter rate, maybe more people would use the parking. I know he addressed it, but he said he couldn't do it. But we're stuck for the money anyway. I don't care whatever he does, we're stuck for it. And we're going to be stuck for it. So let's take the little loss on the revenue and that, of course, we don't have nothing to do with it. Now it's in the hands of somebody else. But anyway, ask Billy maybe to do a little study on that. So we get a, a true picture of how many people actually would want to use the garage. And then that effort could be made trying to get them people to use the garage and at what rate they would be happy to use the garage at. Because as I like I said before, we're going to pay pay and pay and pay and the more they try to raise the rates the less people are going to use the garage or raise the parking meters people ain't going to want to come into the city somewhere along the line you have to go off go off on that tangent and actually get a realistic idea of how many people really want to use the parking garages nobody in the right mind would buy them and to close them all it does is at the burden anyway. We close the garage down, it's still going to deteriorate, maybe even faster. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And I'd just add, I think the great problem there is there are garages that shouldn't have been built. And they were a mistake at the time. They've proven now to be a mistake but it's what the parking authority wanted, what the mayor wanted, and what everyone on council at the time wanted, with the exception of me. Uh, but Mrs. Craik, if you would send a letter to tax collector court right regarding the LST um, as a follow-up on Mr. Spiraglia's request, if we could try to determine the number of uh, people working downtown and uh, from that we're looking for a determination of those who could possibly utilize the garages on a daily basis for parking. Thank you. Good evening, Marie Schumacher, city resident and taxpayer. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, back to last week's caucus. 
Uh, given the content of the condition of parking garages section of the Rich Report, wouldn't it have been appropriate, perhaps even of the utmost importance, to inquire whether the required maintenance will be performed? If a structural engineering firm such as DRC Associates states the Electric City and Linden Street parking garages are in need of immediate repairs to maintain the integrity of the building, vehicles, and occupants, does that not leave the city incredibly vulnerable should something happen if these repairs are not made? And not one single question. Did any of you actually read the, read the Ridge Report? Anyone? If I get time at the end, I'll, I'll read a couple of paragraphs from that section then. Um, these two parking garages contributed 51% of the operating revenues for the year 2011. If one or both of these facilities has to be closed or the use restricted, it would have a great impact on the revenue and require that much more support from the operating budget. Now on to agenda item C. Uh, what will be the product of the engineering study of Civil Crossroads Consulting Engineers and how will what they produce impact the use of Lake Scranton? Um, you can answer that in, in fifth order. If I don't get an answer, I'll submit it tomorrow in writing. Uh, agenda item 6B, what will be the source of payment to abstract uh, in enterprises? Is this an unbudgeted operating expense or will HUD funds be used to pay abstract? Anybody know? Okay. Now, in August 2011, a deal was reached to grant, President Obama, to grant President Obama's request to raise the debt ceiling by $2.1 trillion. In the exchange for the debt ceiling increase, Republicans in Congress demanded spending cuts. The result was the Budget Control Act. The Budget Control Act included budget caps to cut about $900 billion in spending and a super committee was created to find at least 1.2 trillion in additional deficit reduction. <clears throat> a bipartisan majority in the Senate and House passed and President Obama signed a bill to bring about 2.1 billion in spending cuts. This president suggested the sequestration. The Republican-led House of Representatives passed two bills last year to reorganize the cuts. Did the Senate consider these two bills? Not at all. Has the Democrat-led Senate produced or considered a bill prior to the March 1st <coughs> deadline to avert the sequester? No. The, the Democrat Senate has been missing in action. Yet tonight you are scheduled to vote on a resolution item 7D, to which I am strongly opposed. The views expressed by the chair last week and incorporated into each of the three whereas clauses put blame on Republicans only for sequestration and the presumption of economic inequality are both divisive and about as accurate as the first whereas of the tabled legislation to enter into a management agreement with standard parking. This resolution will have little to no influence on the outcome of federal legislation, but I would grade it an A-plus for grandstanding. However, in the interest of accuracy, we certainly should not, not be putting all the blame on Republicans. I think it, this uh, resolution should be defeated. And now I'll read a couple of paragraphs from the condition of parking garage section of the Rich Report. A service life cycle cost assessment for the Scranton parking garages was completed in the spring of 2012. The assessment completed by DRC Associates looked at the conditions of the parking garages and then projected repairs that were necessary to maintain the structural integrity and usability of the parking garages. The report found the Electric City and Linden parking garages are in need of immediate repairs to maintain the integrity of the building, the vehicles, and the <coughs> occupants. The report identified projected costs to repair the parking garages. The total cost projected from 2013 to 2017 was $10,353,400. 
The report identified that there is an immediate need for work on the Linden, Casey, and Electric City garages in 2012 to 2013, and that was estimated at $2,636,235. In addition, the report identified additional work that would be completed in 2014 at a projected cost of $2,807,734, and I would suggest you would all read that section of the report. Thank, Thank you. you. And whatever questions that you had, uh, you can submit to Ms. Carrera, and we will forward them to the appropriate departments for their answers. Thank you for Anna Scranton. Good evening. Oh. Good evening. Good evening. I'm a Republican, but I, I hope you pass this ordinance about the sequester. I think the Republicans are really doing a number on this country. And they are the fault of us being in debt. They don't want to give any rich people, higher income people, they don't want them to pay any taxes, any, they don't want to raise their taxes at all. They're taking care of them. They just want to hurt the senior citizens, Medicare, all the poor, all the agencies. The president has nothing to do with this. The president of the United States is fighting for the people. It's not a case of Democrat or Republican here, but as far as the sequester, in my opinion, the Republicans are horrible. And I'm a Republican. And I was a Republican all my life. And uh, I've seen what they've done through the years. You saw why Mitt Romney didn't get elected, because he showed. What did he say? 47% of those people don't vote or something? They're very elitist. They're snobs. Their elitists, they take care of their own. They don't care about the middle class, they don't care about the poor, and they don't care about senior citizens. So please pass this. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. I hope we have half of these lights in the hallway downstairs, but I guess we don't. Um, the first thing I have here is, you know, I'd just like to uh, say that, uh, you know, some council members have decided not to run. Well, one, and one is determined to run for something else. And even though at times I have disagreed with uh, this council, I would like to say here today that I have a lot of respect for anybody who puts their name on the ballot and tries to do the best they can, whether I agree with them or not. Um, I came here tonight because a uh, little late, meeting the Realtors of the Century Club, but that, that was whatever that was. But uh, there's an important issue that uh, has got my focus at this time. And I think it's an important issue for all the residents of the city. And it has to do with um, the Guardian program. Because um, the county commissioners want to basically starve the program out and then appoint two part-time guardians. And uh, I guess Judge uh, Corbett is uh, trying to determine what she's going to do. And that's, today I'm hoping that Judge Corbett will stand up for the children in the community who are stuck in a terrible situation of divorce where parents are arguing and fighting. And I think that whether you agree with the, the man or the woman of the marriage, or however I mean the marriage is, I mean, somebody has to protect the interest of children. And I think it's a very vital program. And it's my hope that um, the court will not buckle to the county commissioners and allow politics to override the need to protect the most vulnerable individual in the system, which is the child. Um, people are entitled to their opinions, but I, um, that's mine. And the other issue I'd like to present tonight is um, there's some talk of, uh, and I use the law library a lot in the county courthouse. <laughs> and um, they're thinking of either downsizing it or moving it. And that's, that's a decision I think that Judge Munley's going to make. And I think that it's important to uh, maintain that. And I would just hope that the Bar Association in Scranton would protect the law library because I think citizens in this country have a right to have access to the laws that have standing in their lives. And um, basically, that's about all I have tonight. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chrissy. Hi, hey, Chrissy. Chris, you're Chris. topless tonight. Ah, I know. I'm no topless hat. tonight, Jack. <laughs> hey, listen. Ah, good luck to Holy Cross Society Army. Good luck to the team up there. Thank you. Thank you, Take Chris. care, Chrissy. Thank you, Chrissy. Is there anyone else? 5A, motions. <laughs> Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions this evening? Very briefly. Um, first, uh, glad to see that the amendment to the rental registration um, is on the agenda for this evening. Uh, it's something that we've talked about and um, needs, needed to be done, and hopefully it will pass through um, since it seemed in the past that everyone on council agreed to the change. Um, second, uh, the, the, the resolution that we have on and I, I'm not even sure how to pronounce the word anyway. Sequestration? Is that the? Sequestration. Sequestration. Wow. Um, it's a pretty complex issue, granted. Um, and, and it's not something that a resolution from or a letter from Scranton City <laughs> Council uh, will have a dramatic effect upon anybody's beliefs. But it is, it, it is a, an issue that does directly affect the city of Scranton and I, I do believe that we should at least voice our opinion on how we feel as a city uh, about what is going on in Washington. Is the total blame um, to the Republican Party? No. Uh, not by a long shot. And um, I, would, I would probably be more than happy to approve a, a resolution to send a letter to the Democratic administration um, and voice our opinion on what they have done or not done to bring about a, some, some resolution to the problems that are occurring in Washington. Um, but I, I, I think it's something that we should do as a city, as a council, uh, at least to voice our opinion <laughs> on, on, those, on that issue. And Mr. McGough? This will be sent to Democrats and Republicans in Congress and the Senate. Uh, thank you. Uh, and um, you know, hopefully within the coming weeks, uh, something will be done at a national, at the federal level to, to bring about a change in, in policy, um, hopefully. And, and that's all I have for this evening. Thank, thank you. you. Councilman Rogan, do you have any comments or motions tonight on your birthday? Yes, thank you. Um, I'll try to be brief as well. Um, I agree with uh, Mr. McGough on both points, actually. Um, I am glad to see the change in the rental registration. It's more of a, a legality, just a legal change, but it, it is something that everyone agreed on. And also on the sequester, and I, I stated this in the paper, um, you know, I, I think some of the language in the backup, in the back of the legislation was far too harsh, placing blame. But I think everyone agrees that the sequester needs to be replaced with more responsible cuts um, that don't weigh as hev heavily on, for one, for an area that I always feel as strong as national defense. So that's why I, I supported the, um, the motion. Um, moving on to two responses. Um, this first one is from Chief Davis, and I thank him for getting back to us so quick. Um, last week, I inquired um, on behalf of a resident who wanted to um, know about cars parking in the fire lane at the Kaiser Oak Shopping Center, and the chief replied that it's, it's actually the property owner would have to make that request. So I will forward this to um, the resident that, that contacted me. And Ms. Schumacher, on your question regarding the caper, I did speak to uh, Ms. Abley, and she's going to be sending a copy down to City Council's office next week for us to review. So um, after I review it, I, I will address your concerns. Finally, um, well, not finally, um, on to some non-responses, which has been very frustrating. Um, and these are some citizens' requests, but I, I want to elaborate on it a little bit more. Um, I would like to send a, a second request to LIPS asking when the 2013 rooming inspections will be conducted. And if the deadline of March 31st is not met for the renewal of these inspe yearly inspections, 
what recourse would neighbors have if the city does not complete these inspections on time? And I've been contacted by numerous residents who live near or next to a rooming house and they're very concerned. Um, unlike having a neighbor like most of us have where you have a, a single family home or a duplex or a triplex, a rooming house is a whole other ball game. Basically, you have a communal living area and multiple individual rooms that people rent. Whether, you know, what the price point is, that, that doesn't matter, but you have a large amount of people living in a very small space. So safety is, is always something that, um, you know, comes, comes to mind, not only for the neighbors, but for the residents in the rooming house as well. Um, there have been reports on some of these properties that, you know, things haven't been up to code. There's been infestations that have been reported and these issues need to be checked out. Now, I know council sent a letter to Mr. Seitzinger on this issue. We haven't received a response. I think we sent more than one. Multiple. And I know neighborhood leaders have called and <coughs> emailed and haven't received a response. Also, another issue with involves lips that there hasn't been a response on. Um, this is regarding uh, the 1300 block of Sanderson Avenue. Um, a resident contacted me and Mr. M Mr. Joyce, we were talking about it earlier in the week, um, that they've, you know, it's basically a junkyard. And they've contacted LIPS numerous times, haven't had phone calls back, haven't had any action. And that's not right. Any citizen who calls their government, whether it be council, whether it be an apartment head, or whether it be an employee, should have some satisfaction at least to say well you know this is the process or we can do something to help you or we can't do something to help you these people deserve answers and i am hopeful that the department heads aren't checking out because their term is coming likely coming to an end with the new administration taking over next year myself and many members of council have it seems that we say this every week that there's been a lack of response from some department heads, not all. Some have, some have been great at getting back to us. Chief Graziano was one of them. Um, Linda Abel usually gets back to us. Um, a few others, Chief Davis has actually been pretty good at getting back to us. But certain department heads, it just seems week after week, we have a stack of concerns and we don't get anything back. And now with some of them seeing the writing on the wall that they may be out of a job next year with the new administration, it seems that it's gotten even worse. So hopefully something will be done. Um, I know Mr. Joyce may be speaking on this issue as well, requesting a caucus with Mr. Seitzinger on some of these issues. So that's something I would fully support as well. Um, finally, a few requests to the DPW. Some of them first requests, some of them second requests. Um, we also request that the potholes at the end of North Washington Avenue and between DNS Auto and the railroad tracks are repaired. The road down there is actually in very good condition except for one little area right around the railroad tracks. And a couple of residents actually told me that they're worried that there's gonna be an accident. Because one car, group of cars traveling one direction swerve one way, the other group swerve the other to avoid the potholes. Um, so can we please send that request in again? Also, one that has myself and Mr. Loscom have addressed numerous times, which is Pike Street. The potholes still haven't been filled and the road, we still haven't heard anything whether it be placed on a paving list for this year. So can we also request once again that the road is repaired in the meantime and hopefully placed on a paving list for 2013. This is one of the worst roads in the city. Um, also, on East Mountain, please repair potholes on the 1400 block of Fig Street. Also, the street light on the corner of Fig Street and Freud Ave has been out for two months. I don't have the number, but I am going to go up there and try to get that number. And also, the Fig Street sign on the corner of Fig and Freud needs to be replaced. So there's quite a few issues up on just that one block. And that is all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank Mike, you. Could I interject one? Mm -hmm. When you were talking of lips, it reminded me of a, um, could we also inquire about the operation of the food trucks yes. downtown? Yes. Uh, I know I, we probably all received an email from uh, a, one of the property owners, one of the business owners downtown mm -hmm. and <clears throat> questioning how food trucks could park for extended periods of time, especially around the courthouse and under what do they operate under the same 
rules and regulations as would a an established business. Um, I, I think that's a, a legitimate concern for I agree um, for business owners, uh, especially the so. restaurant owners downtown. Um, the only other thing I'd like to add is um, I believe our last letter to Lips would have gone out quite recently in the last week. And that was a request for a meeting in our office among <clears throat> Mr. Seitzinger, uh, officers of the Pine Brook Neighborhood Association, um, our city clerk, and anyone on council who would wish to attend. Uh, to date, we haven't received a response, but I don't know that the deadline for a response was yet reached. I know that. Um, well, I did. I did meet with Mr. Seitzinger and members of the neighborhood association. This is maybe six months ago. It sounds sounds about right. About six months ago, and and, and I I don't want to bash. I, I like Mr. Seitzinger. He's a nice man, but he's. You know, he told us he was going to do these things, and, and they haven't been corrected. Oh, I agree. Um, I talked that's... to him on February 14th yeah. after the council meeting. Uh, I had made some statements during the meeting, and it caused him to want to speak to me immediately. And it was during that conversation that he assured me the following day, Friday, February 15th, this would be taken care of, and he would be in touch with the president of the neighborhood association and have everything taken care of. Nothing has happened other than a few apologetic emails. Yeah. And so it's still my hope, I think, um, to have everyone into council's office could work all of this out amicably and get those rooming houses inspected. And, and, and it's like you said, it's not just a matter of Pinebrook, yeah. it's citywide, mm -hmm. but Pinebrook has been most vocal about it. So <clears throat> that's probably where they should start and then they can yep. pursue everything else. Um, <coughs> and I think if that doesn't occur, we can certainly ask for a public caucus with Mr. Seitzinger, but I know that we have many times in the past, and here we are in 2013 still waiting yeah. for those caucuses with him from years ago. So that's why I'm hoping that perhaps he might be more agreeable to having this meeting in our, in our yeah. office. Absolutely, and whether he meets with us or not, if he gets the job done, that's all that the neighbors care right. about and there's only 10 days left today's the 21st the deadline is the 31st for these inspections so we're, we're running out of time here and I, I imagine that it's not something that's done overnight mm -hmm. you know it, it is a process and it's something that, that takes time so hopefully um, we will get a response I agree <clears throat> thank you you're welcome and councilman Loscombe do you have any comments or motions tonight yes just briefly First of all, Mr. Rogan, since it's your birthday, did you uh, take the day off and steal my notes? Because <laughs> what you stated was pretty much what I was going to say. So we're on the same wavelength. Uh, so not to elaborate any longer, but, but that is a, a high priority, uh, the rooming house inspections and stuff like that. And another opportunity, it provides the, the firefighters in those locations to go on those inspections with them and familiarize themselves with the high-risk uh, properties. Uh, should there be any any situations there and uh, you know it's just a shame that we're, we're down to 10 days and and nothing has been done and I would hope as Mr. Rogan stated that uh, you know they're not just dropping the ball because it might be their last year in, in, in service if that's the case if they don't want to do the job uh, you know get out now and, and let somebody take over that that, uh, that will do it Absolutely. I mean like you said I, I have nothing against Mr. Seitzinger. I think he's a very nice gentleman, but a job has to be done. If you're being paid to do the job, it has to be accomplished. And I would just hope that the case isn't that they're just dropping the ball. But, um, you know, again, everything that was stated by Mrs. Evans and Mr. Rogan just now are, are right on the money. So I would just hope 
hope some people are listening. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Joyce, do you have comments or motions tonight? Yes, I'm going to be very brief. I'm a little bit under the weather and uh, my voice is kind of poor, so I'm going to keep it short tonight. Um, first off, I just wanted to thank the DPW for some of the work they've been doing around the city, especially on the 100 and 200 block of North Everett Avenue. I, I noticed I mentioned um, that there were potholes that needed to be patched along these streets and I'm very pleased to say I did notice that they were patched and I noticed some uh, patching of roads uh, around the city so I'm glad that the DPW is uh, working hard out there. Second, um, we had a speaker tonight um, ask a question about item 6B and whether this was a budgeted expense or not, the $10,000 for the study of uh, uh, Lakes Granton Road and where the money would be coming from. And um, as it does state in the um, agenda item, the money will come from the uh, RERI account. And uh, I do have a few citizens' requests as uh, Councilman Rogan stated, one of the um, problematic properties in the city was 13, is 1346 Sanderson Avenue. Uh, it's in deplorable condition and basically the yard is the junkyard. We've voiced our concerns n n numerous times about this. And I believe our office had sent at least two requests in the past regarding this property. So if we could resubmit that request to Mr. Seitzinger and um, ask him to respond by next week, and if we don't hear a response by next week, maybe it is time to have a public caucus. And my uh, last request is another one that's been repetitive and it has to do with 1406 West Gibson Street. It's a property that's in the Trip Park section of West Side. It's been condemned twice. There are over 100 signatures from neighboring residents that I have uh, in front of me to have the property torn down. And uh, a, a resident contacted me and told me that they heard the property was going to be torn down in the spring, but a week later, there was a for sale sign on the property. So I'm wondering, uh, Attorney Hughes, if you know how this could be possible. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, I was basically told by a resident that a property was being placed on the demolition list. However, uh, a week later, there was a for sale sign on the condemned property. And I was wondering how this could be possible. In your legal opinion. Without knowing all the facts, I mean, as to how it's put, been put on, on the demolition list, there's a procedure that has to, be, has to go through. Assuming that that procedure was followed, even though it could be on the demolition list, the person could still sell the house. And the buyer, of course, would be buying it with notice that it, was, that it is condemned, and then come in with a petition to rehab it. They could make this, the sales contract contingent on them getting approval from the city to take out building permits to, in, in order to rehabilitate the structure according to code. I mean, I, that's about the only way that I could, could explain it. I mean, could, could the city come in, list it as, and condemn the property as unfit for human habitation because of code violation? Um, I'm aware of one situation I heard of this week where um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a duplex. Uh, the first floor is condemned, which was an apartment, but the owner of the property is living in the second floor. So, I mean, I, I don't quite, under, I, I could see where the city comes in and says, here, the first floor is condemned. That has to be brought up to code uh, from the standpoint that no one could live there, but the second floor could be 
up to up to code or at least not be condemned um, just based on those facts I would think that that <coughs> the fact that the city has condemned it the owner could try to sell it if they have somebody that's knowledgeable as to how to write the sales agreement and make a contingent on them getting permits from the city to rehabilitate the structure and take it out of the sale that's the way it could be done okay until the property is finally demolished you know until it's on the demolition list I mean it could be put on a demolition list and the city might not have the money to demolish it actually when you look around you think that there'd be more that there should be more of this you know if yeah. there's buyers that could buy a house you know the handyman special and get it back on the tax rolls instead of knocking all these properties down. I mean, I think that should be something, that's my opinion, it should be encouraged. Okay. Um, thanks for your uh, comments. Mrs. Craig, um, what I want to do is research the situation a little bit more and find out if this property is on the demolition list or not. So could we please send a request to Mr. Seitzinger uh, inquiring whether the property at 1406 West Gibson Street is on the demolition list or not. Um, this has been a very problematic property. There have been over 25 police calls to the property in the past few years and the residents would very much like to see this property torn down and it's a constant eyesore in the neighborhood so um, the, the the neighbors are, are really against uh, reopening the property at this point and finally uh, just to give everyone a brief update where we are we don't have a, uh, a full cash flow report yet however the uh, cash balance of the city as of 320 is 12.1 million dollars and we have 89,945.98 in accounts payable and that's all I have for tonight Mrs. Thanks. Evans <coughs> there's one one thing I forgot to mention if it's okay um, it, it's something that may affect our residents down the road but uh, I was made aware yesterday by a family member that they were traveling Kaiser Avenue where the construction is starting um, right now it's actually across the Scranton line by the bottom of Snake Road there and mm -hmm. it's going to continue through Scranton but they sat at a dead stop for 22 minutes headed west on Kaiser Avenue yesterday the eastbound traffic came in dribs and drabs but it came several times it seems like they've had the whole road closed at times I don't understand I thought when they worked on a main artery like that they could only do one half at a time but God forbid if an ambulance or a fire truck had to respond at that amount of time. But I'm just, maybe we could send Mr. Toledo uh, uh, a letter asking if this is going to be uh, more of a habit than, than, than what, what happened there. But uh, basically, uh, if it's going to continue that way through the city, it's going to cause, I know we're, we're in for some major traffic problems on Kaiser Avenue with this project, and it's all for the better. However, the main artery is supposed to continue continuously be open at least one lane from what I understand and that wasn't the case and I think the contractor there was Krieger um, so I don't know if you know they're not following the regulations or what but I would like to see uh, I wouldn't want to see that happen to our residents down the road but 22 minutes was clocked sitting at a dead stop that's you know that's beyond what should be <laughs> so thank you good evening I wish to begin by reading the response City Council received from Maria Elkins chief of staff for the County Commissioners regarding their decision against participation in a health care consortium among the city school district and county and I believe the question was raised by Mr. Dobson, a city council speaker. Um, according to Ms. Elkins, the county of Lackawanna has decided not to participate in the health care consortium at this time. This decision is based on the strategy that we have developed 
in conjunction with our healthcare consultant and plan to implement in 2014. This may be a consideration in the future. Again, it must be emphasized that the county commissioner's decision not to participate in a potential consortium may well jeopardize its success and thus any and all health care savings that could be realized by the taxpayers of Scranton and Lackawanna County as a result. In addition, City Council received a response to a request from a citizen for an update on the former North Scranton Junior High School building. Mr. Gerald Langen, President and CEO of Goodwill Industries of Northeastern Pennsylvania States, in answer to Council's request, please be advised we are on a path to a closing in April with a construction start in May. Next, it has come to my attention that revenue generators whose success or failure will impact the 2013 budget as well as future budgets have been neglected by the administration, particularly payments in lieu of taxes from tax exempts, the amusement tax, and the on-street parking program. It doesn't appear that the mayor made any requests for pilot payments. As a result, I believe that all city nonprofits should provide documentation to the county tax assessor's office that they deserve the tax breaks they receive. A review to examine whether all Scranton nonprofits meet the criteria for property tax exemption must be performed to ensure that all properties off the tax rolls deserve to remain so. <coughs> In addition, a review of tax exempt properties should be conducted every three years, as is the procedure in, La or in Allegheny County, where 2,800 letters were mailed by the Office of Property Assessment in March to nonprofits, asking each to complete a three page application and explain why the property meets a 2012 State Supreme Court decision that qualifies them for tax exemptions as a public charity. Therefore, Mrs. Craik, please send a letter to the Lackawanna County Commissioners on behalf of Scranton City Council, respectfully requesting them to have the Tax Assessor's Office review the status of all nonprofits with particular emphasis on any and all located in the city of Scranton. Such a measure is equally fair to all tax exempts and will benefit not only the uh, taxpayers of Scranton, but also those of Lackawanna County. Request a response on or before April 9th, 2013. Next, please forward letters to Mr. Gerald Cross of Pell, Mayor Doherty and Business Administrator McGowan regarding the amusement tax. Although legislation enacting this ta tax was legally and lawfully adopted by Scranton City Council, the administration is not collecting this revenue. What is the reason for this delay? On what date will the administration enforce the tax? Will amusements be billed retroactively to receive full payment that the administration has overlooked for the months of January, February, and March of 2013? Request a response on or before April 2nd, 2013. And despite the pleadings of the receiver for the Scranton Parking Authority voiced during a March 14th, 2013 public caucus, and my continuous request to Mayor Doherty, the bids for an on-street parking manager and for a parking enhancement program still have not been advertised in the newspaper. Now, when speaking with our solicitor late this afternoon, uh, during the time we were on the phone, he received uh, information, I believe, from Solicitor Kelly that, uh, the bid specs were going to be sent to him for his review. 
So at least there has been movement. But of course, this still requires the examination of our solicitor to make sure that the specs are correct and what they need to be. And then, of course, the time period of advertising, then another time period required for the selection. So, you know, again, we've been waiting since February 7th, and the clock continues to tick while on-street parking revenues decrease. So if the administration continues to drag its feet on these and other revenue generators, then it may be difficult for council to support any additional borrowing. Any borrowing was to occur simultaneously with enforcement of all new and traditional revenue generators. <coughs> and unfortunately, I do not see that occurring to date. Revenue sources, such as those I have discussed, support payment of the city's financial obligations and lessen the burden on taxpayers. Borrowing will not work without aggressive implementation of revenue generators. Simply stated, borrowing alone will not solve the city's financial problems, and it shouldn't occur absent aggressive and immediate enforcement of all revenue generators included in the budget with, of course, the temporary exception of the commuter tax. Now, I've uh, also heard, I haven't spoken uh, with either the BA or mayor about this directly, but I have heard that some of our revenues are up currently. I don't know specifically which ones they are. But it's my hope that if indeed that's the case, the administration is not looking at that and saying, well, that's up. So that means we don't really need to pursue an amusement tax. We don't really need to be aggressive about a parking tax. We don't have to hurry about uh, the on-street parking program, et cetera. Every single revenue generator is crucial, and they all deserve immediate attention. Next, uh, Mrs. Craig, please forward a copy of the proposed amendment titled Item 6A on tonight's agenda to the County Planning Commission and the City Planning Commission for their review and recommendation in compliance with the requirements of the zoning ordinance amendment procedures. And uh, finally, I have several requests from East Mountain residents regarding paving, lane painting, and traffic signage, which I'll submit to Ms. Carrera following our meeting. And letters will be sent to all appropriate department heads and parties. And that's it. 5B. Amending file of the council number 17, 2012, as amended, entitled Establishing a Registration Program for Residential Rental Properties, requiring all owners of residential rental properties to designate an agent for service of process and prescribing duties of owners, agents, and occupants, directing the designation of agents, establishing fees for the costs associated with the registration of rental property, and prescribing penalties for violations by amending section 1x safety inspection by deleting the phrase but is not limited to at this time i'll entertain a motion that item 5b be introduced into its proper committee so moved second on the question all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed the ayes have it <coughs> so moved 5c authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to execute a deed conveying pedestrian bridge column easements located in the public right of way on the 300 block of Colfax Avenue and conveying an aerial easement in the airspace located on the 300 block of Colfax, Colfax Avenue where the pedestrian bridge is erected and further to execute an air rights agreement between Geisinger Community Medical Center and the city of Scranton. I would like to make a motion to amend item 5C. 
Delete the entire summary title as read by Mrs. Crake and insert the following. Authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to execute a deed conveying pedestrian bridge column parcels containing nine square feet each located in the public right of way on the 300 block of Colfax Avenue and conveying an aerial deed for the airspace located on a 300 block of Colfax Avenue where the pedestrian bridge is erected subject to a reverter clause and to execute an air rights agreement between Geisinger Community Medical Center and the city of Scranton. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. On the question? I believe uh, what was submitted by the legal department was uh, incorrect and as our solicitor reviewed it, uh, he brought that to the attention of the law department and uh, he was able to rewrite it and make the necessary corrections. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Or do, do you need to read that again mm -mm. as a new title, Mrs. Crake? Mm -hmm. It's been amended. I, d I don't believe so, Mrs. Evans. I believe um, if, if you would um, entertain a motion that item 5C as amended. As amended, okay. <clears throat> I'll entertain a motion that item 5C as amended be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5D, appointment of William Lesniak, 314 Pittston Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, as a member of the Historical Architecture Review Board. Mr. Lesniak will fill the unexpired term of Nancy Bizignani, who passed away. Mr. Lesniak's term will expire on October 11, 2017. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. S second. second. On the question? Yes, I would just like to thank Mr. Lesniak for sending in a resume. Anyone else? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A. Reading by title, File of Council Number 11, 2013, in Ordinance, amending File of Council Number 74, 1993, as amended, entitled the Zoning Ordinance for the City of Scranton, by repealing Section 516, entitled Flood Prone Areas, and enacting Section 516, entitled Floodplain Management Regulations. <laughs> You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. I would like to make a motion to table item 6A. Second. On the question? I think you explained it before. So. Yes. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of council number 12, 2013, in ordinance. Ordinance of the City of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, appointing Civil Crossroads Consulting Engineers as special city engineers to the City of Scranton due to a conflict of interest of SECO Associates Incorporated, the City of Scranton's engineer, to investigate and perform engineering studies regarding the condition and deterioration of Lake Scranton Road from Route 307 to Elmhurst Boulevard, issue opinions, recommendations, and specifications for the required rehabilitation and resurfacing of all or portions of Lake Scranton Road, authorizing the payment of professional fees up to $10,000 to be paid from the city's repayments of Urban Development Action Grants account and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute a contract with Civil Crossroads Consulting Engineers. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 
Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, file of Council Number 9, 2013, granting a special encroachment permit to Regional Hospital of Scranton of <coughs> 700 Jefferson Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, for the installation of a canopy extending from the applicant's building 21 feet 0 inches, subject to conditions. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption, file of Council Number 10, 2013, establishing nine on-street parking spaces in the 700 block of Jefferson Avenue from the intersection of Jefferson and Pine Street, north along Jefferson Avenue, through and including the intersection of Jefferson Avenue and Gibson Street in the city of Scranton, and repealing inconsistent ordinances. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Public Safety? As chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, resolution number 11, 2013, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract with Michael Baker, Jr. Incorporated, 100 Airside Drive, Moon Township, Pennsylvania, to provide pre-demolition environmental inspections <coughs> for approximately 20 to 50 properties scheduled for demolition of hazardous structures through Scranton's Office of Economic and Community Development. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Community Development? <laughs> As Chair for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question. Yes. Um, am I to assume, I'm assuming that this would be paid through CDBG funding it was, that we set aside for, that yeah. was set aside for paving? Yes, it was, the, it was, and it was also, I'm not sure if it's in the back of this week, but it was also the lowest bid, too. We discussed yes. that last week. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D. For consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, Resolution Number 12, 2013, authorizing the Council of the City of Scranton to execute a resolution of opposition to across the board budget cuts required by the Budget Control Act of 2011 called sequestration and rejection of any and all approaches that expand economic inequality and shift increased burdens to those who can least afford it. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7D. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>